Welcome back, everyone. The Ghana Status Quo Service is taking steps to assess the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on businesses in the country. To this end, it is embarking on a business tracker survey to establish how enterprises have been hit. Here, uh, we are going to be speaking with uh, government statistician, Professor uh, Samuel Kobnenim. There you see him, who has joined us from his office. It's great to have you this afternoon, sir. Tell us a bit more about this uh, business survey and why you deem it necessary to do so now. Thank you, Mr. Kwao, and good afternoon. As you rightly said, today, 26th um, May 2020, Ghana Statistical Service is collaborating with the United Nations Development Program and the World Bank to roll out a survey to assess the impact of COVID-19 on businesses in Ghana. Specifically, what we seek to do is to ascertain the number of businesses that had to close down because of the partial lockdowns and those that, because of COVID-19 broadly, have been affected by their business activities. Beyond this, we will specifically look at the pathways by which they have been impacted by COVID-19, specifically look at how turnover has played out, how, how input raw materials have been affected, specifically as a result of the closure of our borders. Although we are aware that goods, goods are moving in and out of countries, we all know that the airline industry has been severely hit by COVID-19 because of the challenges that we had in terms of infection rates across different countries. Another perspective that we're going to look at the impact will be from the job losses point of view and also how financial um, challenges have impacted on the activities of businesses. The other specific objectives of the business tracker survey is to help us identify pathways that businesses have adopted in terms of technology to cope with the challenges associated with COVID-19. And this will be a platform for knowledge sharing among different businesses in terms of how they can adopt different strategies to cope with the pandemic. This would also help us enumerate best practices that can be shared um, mm. with businesses. Then finally, it will give us a sense of how businesses can, can bounce back, specifically from the perspective of the stimulus, the, the 600 million Ghana cities that the government has put out for businesses to ensure that they stay alive during this period um, of the pandemic. So what it's going to help us do with is that with the pathways that are enumerated earlier on, it would help government begin to shape its interventions and also ask the big question whether the 600 million Ghana cities is adequate to keep businesses alive. Things of businesses that we have, that is businesses that are large in nature, for which reason they are the ones that drive our gross domestic product and businesses that are in there for survival base. And we all know that out of the 638,234 business establishments that we have mm. in this country, about 80% of them are micro and businesses. And for the large businesses, we have just about 0.39%. So with these statistics, we think the government is in a better position looking at how COVID-19 has impacted on businesses with better shape um, interventions moving forward. Right. Also worth mentioning is the fact that businesses in this country, as of 2017, had about 3 million um, Ghanaians working in establishments. So we are talking about 10% of our entire population that will be impacted one way or the other from the business um, perspective. Okay, so ultimately you want to find out how COVID-19 has impacted businesses and how they can be helped. And so could you expand more on uh, how this is going to be carried out at the specific businesses you're going to be approaching? What sort of questions are you going to be asking them? Thank you very much. So for the first time, Ghana Studies Card Service would be approaching the data collection exercise from a telephone interview point of view. So we call it the computer assisted telephone interview model of data collection. So we are going to use the integrated business establishment survey as the sampling frame and select 1% of businesses. So we're talking about about 6,000 firms. So specifically, we're going to work, we're going to interview about 6,000 firms, which includes our non-response rate. Mm. And these firms are across the different sizes that I talked about. And we envision about 30 to 40 minutes discussion. And as I indicated, the questions would focus on one, whether you had to close down because of the partial lockdowns. And if you 
did close up for how long did you close up mm. and now that you are still you have, you've come back to business the extent to which your activities have not been impacted by the different directives both globally and nationally so the perspective that i talked about in terms of input raw materials especially for those that get their raw materials from outside the country so we're going to ask questions in the area of okay. imports and exports whether the businesses have had to um, lay people off on different terms in terms of the extent to which COVID-19 is impacting on their resourcefulness and overall how their profit margins have been impacted and how they've dealt with the pandemic. So it would okay. from how the perf business performance indicators have been um, have been dealt with by the different businesses and would we'll proceed to the coping strategies and the strategies by which they see themselves as coming back in the next few months well, one um, quick the, one one quick one before we allow you to go uh, last month we saw inflation go up to the highest we have seen in eight months now most analysts uh, analysts seem to think that things will normalize as we go forward uh, what do you anticipate will happen going forward with regards to inflation indeed um last month that is april we recorded 10.6 inflation which was the highest since the um, August 2019 inflation after the rebasing exercise. The rate that we announced last week was heavily imp impacted by the partial lockdowns and the sort of hedging that a lot of households and market women taking advantage brought about. Mm. We envision that the rate might slightly go down, but we don't foresee a situation where it's going to dip to the 7.8 that we recorded in March 2020. So although we anticipate that things will normalize, especially at the time that we are looking forward to hearing some possible um, ease down process to begin. We expect that we're going to return to normalcy and therefore that panic buying that we did in the early month of April, we don't expect to see same uh, moving forward. Thank you so much, uh, government statisticians. Great to have you on the marketplace uh, this afternoon, uh, Professor Samuel Kopneni. We appreciate your time with us this afternoon. We are watching the marketplace now to what appears to be a food glut we are experiencing in Ghana from eggs to rice to watermelons. We have been reporting over the past week that farmers are distressed because they are unable to sell their produce leading to wastage. Take a listen to this. And the market women are not being allowed to sell their eggs. So it's causing us a huge problem. What kind of problem? Right now. For them to come for their eggs is a problem and movement to is being restricted. Mm. Yeah. Having about 40,000 crates of eggs mm -hmm. right now. And it's a big problem at this time. We are not able to sell them. Mm. Yeah. If things don't change, we, we have no option. We, we don't know how to dispose these eggs. Mm, for things to change. If things are to change, these eggs would have moved within a week. Yeah. Within a week, it, we will be able to dispose them of. It's like there's some disease on the land. That's not the, some of the watermelon uh, gets rots. Some get overgrown. That's why right. it's like we didn't get uh, too much rain. Five cities lay. Three cities, four cities, two cities, one cities. Look at that. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. i to we have a brown We have a red, red, red and white, red and white. And those are a journal side about form. Some farmers and traders speaking there to Joy Business. And before uh, when COVID-19 started, we were a bit worried because we thought there were going to be uh, issues with food uh, security. But it appears now there is a glut, and we are struggling to sell our produce. Well, joining me to discuss this is uh, CEO of Agribusiness Chamber, Ghana Agribusiness Chamber, Anthony Morrison. Thanks uh, for joining us this afternoon on the marketplace. I want to pick up from what one of the people you saw in the clip uh, said about the fact that because of the lockdown, people are not moving too much, 
or people are not moving too much because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and so they are unable to sell. This is worrying, isn't it? Hello, Anthony. Yes, hello. Yes, so I, I was asking you how worrying you think it is that we have a food glut now. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, a very good afternoon to your viewers. I think that um, the result of the food glut is not a result of uh, the private sector and including government not taking the right measures uh, in fixing some of these um, challenges today. For instance, I mean, we shouldn't be having blood where uh, eggs. Okay, uh, obviously we're having challenges there with Anthony Morris and we'll fix that and get right back to him. But moving on to other stories, the chief executive of the Ghana Expo Promotion Authority, Ifwa Asabi Asari says, a recovery plan for Ghana's Expo market is underway as countries around the world reopen their economies. She has been speaking to Joy Business about how Ghana's Expo market has taken a hit from COVID-19 has affected our work. One, we, it, it, um, we actually need money from import to support the export um, industry. There was no import coming in, so then it means I'm losing the funds that I need to promote exports. Basically, this is how it affected me. I cannot do all the interventions I want to do for the export industry. All the programs that I planned for 2020 was in vain. B. We couldn't get in touch with our exporters. We couldn't take them out onto the international market. So it has affected, aside being a health issue, it had become a socioeconomic issue that had affected um, the kind of industry that we are in. So when you say industry, so which sector specifically, and how are the people in that space coping uh, coping with these um, tough times? Every every aspect of industry in Ghana, so I cannot even name some and leave some out. It has affected every industry that um, um, is in the country, and every um, sector that is um, part of the export ecosystem has been affected as well. So what's the recovery pl the plan to, to get back? Gradually, um, we, we, we are getting back into our groove. We are still working. We are in touch with them because of technology. We are using every means we can to stay in touch, and we are encouraging them to even plan for the after COVID, because life is going to be before COVID and after COVID. After COVID, what are we going to do? And the, the plans are ahead. We are talking about how we are going to move the industry to the next level. A lot of things have changed. Now we, can, we have realized that we can even uh, manufacture certain things that we thought we couldn't manufacture in this country. So it has actually opened our eyes. We've had some positives out of it where people are manufacturing and, and, and doing things that otherwise we would have imported. So uh, that's the good side of it. Mm. Yeah. So what, what would this mean for your work? Do you think it's going to sort of expand our export or sort of things that we produce here locally because of the experience? Looking into Africa. We want to work within Africa. The intra-African trade is now here to stay. We, we are looking at it and seeing that this can be done. 1.5 billion uh, or 1.3 billion people in Africa. Why not trade amongst ourselves? And I can see that vigorously the debate is on about trading within Africa and it, suddenly we realize that there are so many things we can do why don't we do them and you know let them stay in the, the, the continent and let their money stay on the continent okay in the course of the program we'll speak with uh, two importers and exporters really on uh, how their businesses have been impacted uh, by COVID-19 but let's reconnect with uh, Anthony Morrison, who is CEO of the Ghana Chamber by phone. Hopefully, we'll have a smooth conversation. So, what, Anthony, we're talking about uh, how worrying it is that we're experiencing a food glut during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. What do you think is the problem? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think that is the lack of proper planning. Um, if you follow, you follow that during the 
the earlier discussions that we have uh, put out. We were very emphatic on the fact that there was a need for the ministry to properly set up the uh, a scenario planning mechanism to actually uh, project the industry where the challenges, the possible challenges might be coming from uh, as a result of uh, the lockdown and the post-lockdown and also the post-COVID challenges uh, in total. So what we are seeing now is uh, an evidence of uh, we not looking at the scenario in a, in a bigger picture. Okay? So we are looking at a situation where uh, if you take the, the situation of the air, the students not being in school and the hotel and the conferences that are not uh, coming on as a result of the, the directives from the president. Now, what should we do as a country? We do know that you can keep eggs in the fridge for a month, okay? There are various uh, innovative ways we can look at the preservation of eggs. Now, with regards to um, the watermelon, okay, and the rice industry, we already know that this has been up and coming every year. Every now and then, we have stories of watermelon in BA, watermelon in Sege, not being bought and not being able to, to process. Mm. The, the point is that the peak level of our watermelon in the country, as in where for it to be commercialized into processing, we need set some level of uh, brick level, which we do not have in the country. So we, we need to engage the likes of uh, seed breeders, researchers, to be able to research and come up with very high brick seed that could go uh, into some uh, processing, effective mm. processing. Uh, now, uh, sorry, we don't have enough time on this one. Uh, these solutions you prefer are uh, long termish I should think. What can we do now, seeing that food stuff is going waste? So the, the immediate thing we need to do now is to uh, procure equipment and storage. Uh, for instance, for the eggs, you need to go directly. We boil as many eggs as we can, and we can them. We can them. So Ghanaians will have to start thinking of how to eat boiled eggs, which are already can and selling. Okay, because that can last for the next two months on the shelf. Now, with regards to the watermelon, yes, we don't. Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah, go on. So, with regards to the watermelon, at best, we need to reduce prices and sell more because there is no reason to be selling one watermelon in Sege at three cities, whereas in Accra it's twenty cities. Because a lot of people would like to eat watermelon. But the cost is driving them away. So let's reduce the prices. Those intermediaries will bring them. And they will be able to sell many watermelons as possible. But with regards to the rice, they need more harvesters. I was in Akute myself uh, from uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and yesterday. I saw everything myself. The challenges are enormous. Okay. And this is why the chairman is calling. My final statement is that we need um, to come up with a master plan agriculture strategy and boost infrastructure development. We need the infrastructure, sustainable infrastructure, to be able to absorb some of these challenges that we are facing now. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, that was CEO of the Ghana Chamber of Agribusiness, Anthony Morrison, there on what to do about the food glut. Now, before that, uh, this, that conversation, we're talking about the fact that the Ghana Export Promotion Authority is... Uh, planning a recovery as countries begin to reopen their uh, economies. Now, uh, I think that we can speak with Jeffrey Osebonsu, who is uh, right, who is CEO of Ignite Farmers. Um, hopefully, we'll be joined by Kofi Avinu, who is an importer of thrift clothing, or what we call secondhand clothing, to share some perspective. But we have Hello. Jeffrey, who is uh, CEO of Ignite Farms. He is an exporter of coconut products. And it's great to have you, Jeffrey. So let's begin with... Uh, how you have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. OK, well, good afternoon. Uh, as we all know, Ghana is integrated on the global market. Mm. Uh, we know uh, export forms about 33.6% of our GDP. And uh, international trade is about 68.3%. Uh, this whole pandemic uh, has been uh, uh, a global challenge and export values are coming down. 
due to this whole um, uh, global challenge. We are hoping to uh, walk through this challenging moment and then um, at least focus on the African continental future mm. as well. So far, for my side, I've been challenged by um, this whole pandemic because of my off-takers being in the UAE and China, where um, tourism and trade is, is, is an essential um, role in their economies. In this pandemic, we have all of that on stack. Okay. And, and just to give uh, our viewers an idea, how many tons of coconut were you exporting? What has changed, really? Okay, initially we were doing about 50 tons per month for the um, tender coconut, and the dry we were doing about the whole thing is on hold because um, from from I think from from March we stopped exporting to China due to this whole pandemic. Mm. Our off-takers had to write us a letter for us to be on hold because of um, the closure of borders and. And the whole lot in, in UAE too is on hold now. In UAE now we are doing just 25 a month, and next month we are holding on. So this whole pandemic is, is really affecting business. And, and, and a are, quick one, a quick one before uh, we go. How are you adjusting? I know that you initially had plans to sell the coconuts locally. How are you adjusting? We are still working with the Ghana for promotion on on on. On the few funding aspect, um, we are hoping um, after this whole pandemic, we can sit down and renegotiate a whole lot because we're looking at um, looking around the African uh, continent and mm. also the, the domestic market. So um, we are hoping uh, we go back to the tables after this whole uh, pandemic. Jeffrey, thank you so much uh, for speaking with us. That was uh, Jeffrey Osebonsu, who is chief executive of Ignite Farms. They are exporters of coconut products to markets such as the UAE and China. And that's it for the marketplace uh, this afternoon. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Kwa. There's more news as always at myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Have a good day.